Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Law of Attraction Mastery. But like I said, every video I'm always going to start with that one question, which is very important. What's that question? You know what's the question? Did you do your manifestation today? Did you use Law of Attraction today? Which means what? Did you do your gratitude technique today? Did you do your visualization today? Did you look at your vision board today? Did you read your affirmations today? Do anything you need to do from one of these techniques, but make sure that you start your day with manifestation. You end your day with manifestation because otherwise law of attraction doesn't work for you guys. So please remember to do your law of attraction today, right now. If you haven't done it already, stop this video, pause this video if you have to, do your law of attraction technique and then come back to this video. Okay. All right. So what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about one of the most important layers of law of attraction. If you remember, how does law of attraction work? It works on the formula of FTBA as if I already have it. And what does that mean? It means that we need to feel, we need to think, we need to believe, and we need to act as if we already have the end goal that we want to achieve in our life. Only then we start vibrating at the frequency of what we want. And then around us is the frequency of that goal. It's We start attracting that frequency towards us. And that's exactly how law of attraction works, right? So FTBA as if I already have it. Remember that? No, we've talked about feelings, we've talked about thoughts, we've talked about actions quite, quite a couple of times, but now it's very important to talk about beliefs. Because many times people say, um, I've been having questions on law of attraction on the group that, you know, I'm trying to use law of attraction, but somehow it's not working for you. One of the key reasons why law of attraction doesn't work for people, because they have limiting beliefs. That's right. Belief is one of the strongest layers of the law of attraction frequency. Now, there are two types of beliefs in life. Limiting beliefs and empowering beliefs. That's right. Limiting beliefs and empowering beliefs. What does that mean? We have some beliefs which limit us and then we have some beliefs which empower us. There are some beliefs which limits our frequency because of which we're not already able to attract what we want in our life. And then there are some beliefs which empower us, which gives us the power, gives us the frequency to attract what we want in our life. So it's extremely crucial for you to understand how beliefs are made and how you can change beliefs. What are some of your current limiting beliefs that might be stopping you in your life? For an example, let's take one example of limiting belief for every area of our life. Okay, so there is physical health, there is relationships, there is career and there is money. Remember, four areas of our life. So let's take an example for the first one, physical health. Let's say you have a limiting belief that says that uh, I can't lose weight because I have hormonal problems in my body. Now that's a limiting belief. The moment you say because of hormonal problems, you can't lose your weight, then that becomes your reality and you'll never be able to lose your weight. Right? So that's a limiting belief. Uh, you could also have a limiting belief physically that says that because of my age, health problems are natural at my age. The, the older I grow, it's natural to have health problems. If you have limiting beliefs like these, you will have health problems, right? So that's about physical health. Let's look at your relationships. In your relationships between husband and wife, if you have a limiting belief that says after five years of marriage or after 10 years of marriage, it's difficult to have romance in relationships. That's a limiting belief. If you have that limiting belief, that is exactly what you will attract in your relationships. Or if you have a limiting belief in relationships that says that my relationships always, always cheat me. People in my life always cheat me. Now that's a limiting belief which, which stops the attraction of having good relationships in your life, right? So that's a limiting belief in the relationship example. Let's take career. Let's say you have a limiting belief that says that it's difficult to have promotions without education. That's right. A lot of people have this limiting belief. It's difficult to have promotion in my life without education. So what a lot of people think is that unless they do their MBA, they do their PhD, they won't get promotions in their organization. But frankly, that is just a limiting belief. Or in your career, if you have a limiting belief that when the market is down, it's natural for my career to slow down. Now that's a limiting belief. If you believe your market controls your business or your job, that's a huge limiting belief that you're living with. In the area of money, the fourth area of our life, if you have beliefs that says money is the prob is the root cause of all problems in our life, that's a limiting belief. You'll never be able to attract money in your life. Or making money is very difficult. Or I make money with a lot of difficulty in my life. There's, I've always faced struggle in my life. If you have limiting beliefs like that, you will attract struggle, right? So it's extremely crucial for you 
to not only recognize your limiting beliefs, but also change your limiting beliefs. So are you ready for that? I'm sure you are. So let's get excited. Okay. So first, let's understand what are beliefs and how are they made? A belief is nothing but a simple thought, a simple thought, which has been repeated so many times in your life that it has become permanent thought. So a thought which becomes permanent is called a belief, nothing else. For an example, I am a boy. And believe me, I know I'm a boy. <laughs> now, if I say I'm a boy, how do I know that? Was I born with this belief? No. When I was born, somebody told me for the first time that I'm a boy. And when it was repeated multiple times and hundreds of times and thousands of times, now I don't question the fact that I'm a boy anymore. So me being a boy is not just a reality. It's a thought which was given to me for the first time in my life. And it's been repeated so many times that it's become permanent. So that's a belief. 90% things in life, almost 99% things in life are nothing but beliefs, which is given to you by somebody in life. Sun rises from east, sun sets in the west. You've never invent, you've never discovered that yourself. By the way, when you say this is east and this is west, somebody made that for the first time, right? So that became a belief. If the person who made east and west for the first time would have called this as west and this as east, you would have believed that because that would have gone on for centuries and it would have been repeated many times and that would have become a belief. So bottom line, any thought which is repeated many times and becomes permanent is called a belief. Now, once you have a belief in your life, it becomes your personal reality. That's right. It becomes your personal reality. Now, there are some global realities or global beliefs that we live with. For an example, I'm a boy or a particular person is a girl. Now, that's a global belief. Whether you go to India, whether you go to US, any corner of the world you go, a boy is called a boy and a girl is called a girl. Now, that's a global reality or a global belief that we all believe in. Now, there are community beliefs, which means that uh, beliefs that belong to Hindus, Muslims, Sikh or Christians. Now, these beliefs are community beliefs. Then there are family beliefs. Within the community, there are family beliefs. Some people believe that we need our children to be very liberal, very free. They should do what they want to do. Then there are some families who believe that my children or our children in our family should always be disciplined. They shouldn't do what they want to do. They should do what their elders want them to do. Now, these are family beliefs. In the family, there are something called as individual beliefs, right? So you have a belief. I have a belief. These are individual beliefs. Our personal beliefs becomes our personal reality. That's right. It becomes our personal reality. There was this one guy who in US, there was an experiment done on him on beliefs where uh, he had cancer. So a group of people in doctors, just to understand the power of beliefs, admitted him on a, in a particular hospital for six months and told him that after six months, we're going to give you a particular injection. We are working on it. It's still under research. It's still under discovery. But once that injection is done, it's created in one dose, you can cure your cancer. Now, he didn't believe it, but they kept him there in the hospital for six months and they kept repeating that to him. So what happened after six months? He started believing that this injection is going to cure me one day. So he started getting ex excited. He started looking forward to it and he really believed it. Now, that became his personal reality. After six months, they gave him an injection and believe it. It's a true story. You can find it on Google. It's called the placebo's effect experiment. The placebo's effect experiment. This man was actually healed. He was actually cured of cancer. But now here's the danger part of it. Remember, this was his personal reality and he didn't create this reality. Somebody else gave him this reality. So somebody else can break it, right? Now, some reporter found out about this experiment and he declared it in newspapers that these doctors have come up with some fake medicine, which they're calling it a cure for cancer, but actually it's nothing but sugar water. That actually what it was. It was just plain sugar water, what they gave him. And that injection cured him. But now here's the problem. Even though he believed that this injection could heal him and it did heal him. When he read in the newspapers that this injection was a fake, in the next 48 hours, this man died. That's right, he died because he realized that this injection doesn't work. So his belief collapsed because of that. His personal reality killed him. His body started reacting. And when they did diagnosis, they realized that he died of cancer. Now, how does that happen? Because our mind, our body, everything's made of energy. Our beliefs are the strongest layers of energy. When we vibrate at that frequency of a belief, our body starts vibrating at that frequency. Our immune system reacts to that. Our, our energy around us reacts to that and we start attracting that frequency. So think about it now, how important it is for you to recognize your limiting beliefs and change them into what? 
empowering beliefs so that you could really attract what you want in your life, right? So remember, what is a belief? A belief is nothing but a thought. It's a simple thought which somebody gave you in your life. It's not reality. It is just a simple thought that was converted into reality or a belief by repeating many, 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 many times. Another way where beliefs become stronger in life is when you start finding references that proves that that belief is true. I repeat that. A belief becomes reality for you when you find references to prove that that belief is true. For an example, if you believe that market controls your business, then one, you need to repeat it many times to believe that, right? So many people say, market controls your business, market controls your business. So what happens because of that is you start believing in it because you've repeated it many times. But now when you start finding references to prove that this belief is true, this belief becomes even more real for you. It becomes even more strong for you. For an example, you meet a friend of yours and he says that, you know, my business was doing excellent for the last one year, but last month the share market dropped because of which my business went down. Now this is one proof you got. Then you meet another friend and he says the same, second proof. You meet another friend, he gives you the same proof, third proof. Another friend gives you another proof, fourth proof. The moment you get three to four proofs, four proofs for proving that your or references or examples to prove that your belief is true, now this belief becomes really, really strong, right? And then what happens is because you believe that the market controls your business, it impacts your thoughts, your actions, you take limited actions and then you get limited results. Now, when you get limited results, you say, see, when the market is down, my business is down. So you start collecting personal references, personal experiences of your life that proves to you that, yes, this belief is true. Market controls my business. But the fact is that's not true. The market doesn't control your business because let's look at it. Market controls business for huge organizations like uh, Tata's, Ambani's, Bill Gates, Apple company, these are huge organizations. Their business gets impacted when the market goes down. You and I, we are very small. We are very, very small in the market. When Apple company, let's say, makes uh, 100,000 crores and if the market goes down, they make 800,000 crores. That's about it. For them, that's market down. But for people like you and me who make 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 3 lakh, 5 lakhs, 10 lakh rupees a month, it's very small money. Believe me, it's very small money. What is 10 lakhs compared to what Apple company makes? It's, it's nothing. It's not even a drop in the ocean. So frankly speaking, our business has no impact from the market because the market is so huge out there. It's a big market out there. Is there enough money in the market for you and me and our ambitions of 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 5 lakhs, 10 lakhs a month? Oh, there is more than enough space in the market, even when the market is down for people like you and me. So don't worry about that. There is always money in the market. Now watch what's happening. Your belief that market controls your business is probably already changing, right? How? Because I give you one reference, one logical reference to prove to you that market doesn't control your business, your beliefs control your business. Because I gave you a very solid logic, a very solid reference that market controls business for huge organizations, not for people like you and me. And that does make sense, right? So that logic is already giving you one reference that market does not control your business. You control your business. If you could repeat this, you control your business, you control your promotions, you control your career. This becomes a belief by repeating it again and again and again and again. Now, all you need to do is find references, which means find people for whom this belief is true. Find people whose business doesn't get impacted in spite of the business, in spite of the market situation. And the more you find such people, the more you find references, the more you will believe that this belief is true, that you control your business. Market does not control your business. Now, personally, I, in the last five years, while the market has gone up and down, my business has grown about 100% growth ratio every single year. How? Well, one logic, like I told you, the market is too huge for my ambitions. I mean, even though the market is down, there's enough. There's like 100,000 times money than my ambition in the market because I'm not trying to make 100 crores every month. I'm just trying to make a few lakhs a month. And that's not a big deal for the market. So really... Logically speaking, I have never gone down in my business. In fact, my business has only grown. That's one reason. The second reason is because I believe, I believe that I control my business. The market has no impact on my business. Outside in my life, where there is energy all there around me, I start attracting opportunities to me. I start attracting people who give me business. I don't attract problems. I attract opportunities. 
I'm able to take the action which is required to do such excellent service for my clients that they easily refer me to more clients. But if I have this limiting belief that market controls my business and I start believing that now my business is going to go down, then my actions are limited. So I'm not taking excellent service. I'm not giving excellent service to my clients. So they don't refer me a lot. And then I say, see, market controls my business. But that's not true. Market doesn't control your business. You control your business. Your beliefs control your business. Right? So here's an exercise I want you to do to change your beliefs. Step number one. Step number one. Recognize your limiting beliefs in area, every area of your life. How do you do that? Simply ask yourself this question. What are the negative beliefs that I have which limits my attraction and my goals? I repeat. What are the limiting negative beliefs that I have which limits my attraction in the goals that I want to attract? Right? So ask yourself this question. What are my negative beliefs? What are my limiting beliefs? In every area of my life for physical health, for relationships, for career, for money, and write down all these limiting beliefs because the first step to changing anything in your life is to recognize that, right? So recognize your limiting beliefs. That's the step one. Step two, convert that negative belief into a positive belief using an affirmation. What's an affirmation? Nothing. An affirmation is a positive thought written in a positive tense and the present tense, right? So if I'm saying that, um, I, I, I always find it difficult to make money. That's a negative belief. Let's say I found that out. Now what I do is I convert that into a positive belief by writing a positive affirmation about it. For an example, I easily attract money in my life every single day in my business. I happily and easily attract money in my life every day in my business. Now that's not only a positive belief, but that's an affirmation. So that starts becoming your frequency, right? So step one, recognize your limiting beliefs. Step two, Make an affirmation to convert that negative belief into a what? Positive belief or an empowering belief, right? Now, step three, very, very important. Repeat this new affirmations as many times as you can. Because the more you repeat it, the more you'll believe it. The more you repeat it, the more you'll believe it, right? So, 100 times a day, at least 20 times a day. You wake up in the morning, you say that belief. You sleep in the night, you wake, you say that belief. In fact, say that belief, not just by, by saying it like a normal thought. Say it like you believe it, like say it passionately. Money comes to me easily. Money comes to me easily. Rather than saying, yeah, money comes to me easily. Money comes to me easily. Money comes to me easily. No, don't just say it like that. Feel it emotionally. Say it passionately. Money comes to me easily every day in my business. Money comes to me easily every day in my business. The more passionately you say it, the more you're fueling that belief with energy that's going to attract that to you. And then you will attract opportunities that will give you money and business easily in your business every single day of your life. Right? So step one, recognize your limiting beliefs. Step two, convert your negative belief, your limiting belief into an empowering belief or a positive belief by using a affirmation concept. And then step three, repeat your, limit, your empowering beliefs as many times as you can. Now here is the step four, which is very, very important. Start looking for references. Start looking for examples of other people in your life that proves that your new belief is true. Because if you don't find proof, it will be difficult for your subconscious mind to believe it. Right. For an example, in the area of health, uh, right now I'm going through a small problem called gallbladder stone. Right. And so I've got a little stone in my gallbladder. Now, a doctor says that you need to remove the entire gallbladder to remove the stone. You can't really just remove the stone like kidney stone. Kidney stone can be simply dissolved through laser. But for the gallbladder, you have to remove the whole gallbladder. Now, I could simply believe that. Right. Don't believe anything the world tells you which is negative. Question it. Inquire it. Find out if that belief is truly true or not. You know, are there other people in the world who've been cured by gallbladder stone without removing the gallbladder? So I started doing research and I found out there are many, many references in the world of people who've cured their gallbladder stone in just five days. That's right. Some in even just 24 hours. And the best part is without any medicine. There is a way to cure gallbladder stone simply by using apple juice, Epsom salt, olive oil and lemon juice. It's a 24 hour process. Look it up on on Google, on YouTube, just type in how to call, cure gallbladder stone in 24 hours. You'll find so many videos out there of reputable Ayurvedic gurus, doctors who've given this entire treatment, which you can do simply at home with apple juice, Epsom salt, lemon juice and olive oil. And in just 24 hours, maximum five days, you can dissolve your gallbladder stone without any operation sitting at home. No medicine at all. No money at all. And you have a healthy liver after that. You have a clean liver after that. You have a clean gallbladder after that. What else do you want? Now, what I did was, after I found this out, I started saying 
my gallbladder stone can be healed naturally and easily. My gallbladder stone is already cured naturally and easily. My gallbladder stone is already cured naturally and easily. So I keep repeating this, I keep repeating this, I keep repeating this. And then, then I start looking for references of people who've already cured themselves using this belief that gallbladder can be cured naturally and easily. So I started looking for references on the net. You don't even have to go around looking for people. Just go on the net and there are thousands of people out there for every kind of belief in the world. So I started looking for people who were saying, people who've cured gallbladder stone naturally. And I've got so many references of people. The more I read, the more I read, the more I read, I believed it. And now that I believed it, I'm starting the, I'm starting the treatment today. And I'm 100% sure that my gallbladder stone is gonna be cured because in my mind, it's already cured naturally without any surgery, without any operation. Right. So congratulate me that my gallbladder stone is already healed without any surgery, without any operation. It's already healed naturally and easily. It's already healed naturally and easily. Right. So that's how you make a new belief, guys. I'll repeat all the steps for you once again in the end of this video. Step one, recognize your limiting beliefs. Ask yourself, what's the limiting belief? What's the negative belief that I keep repeating in my head, which stops me from achieving my goals in every area of my life, physical health, relationships, career, and money, right? So step one, what are the negative or the limiting beliefs that I have that stops me from attracting my goals? Step two, convert your limiting belief or your negative belief into a positive belief or an empowering belief using an affirmation. Step three, Repeat that belief as many times as you can. And believe me, anything you repeat becomes so easy to believe, right? And repeat it passionately, repeat it emotionally, repeat it feeling happy about it. Believe it. Fourth, to believe it even more, find references around you externally that proves that this belief is true. The more you find those references, the more you'll believe it. And here's what happens after that. Once you start believing it more and more, your attraction starts working and everything about your belief becomes true. And then what happens? is your subconscious because it starts believing your mind and your body supports you to take excellent action. So your FTBA, everything comes aligned, right? So you take the actions that are necessary to align with those beliefs. And as a result of that, you get the first experience that proves your belief is true. That becomes your personal reference, your personal experience. Keep creating results. You'll have the second reference, a third reference, and the fourth reference. And the beauty is these are not anybody else's references. These are not somebody else's experiences. These are your own experiences, right? The more you experience it, the more you believe it. Like in my case, many times my, my stomach has come up to about, my waist has come up to about 37 inches. And I'm not just saying waist, I'm saying my stomach. Because you should always measure your stomach up to your navel area, area to see really what's your measurement size. I'm about 37 right now. And I, my goal is always to remain at 34, 35. Now I've many times come to 37 and gone back to 34, gone back to 37 and come back to 34. Right now I'm at 37. Do you think I believe I can do it? Yes, because I have many personal experiences in my past history where I've done it many times. So it becomes very easy for me to do it. So you need to believe to do something, guys. But for belief, recognize your limiting belief, convert it into an empowering belief, repeat it as many times as you can to make it a new belief, which is a strong belief. And fourth, find references around you to truly believe it. The more you believe it through other references, the more you create your own references. Once you start creating your own references, then this belief is completely yours. And nothing in the world stops you from achieving your goals because now you've got a huge belief that attracts your frequency towards it. And this now, by the way, is your personal reality. The difference is, it's a beautiful reality. Okay, guys, so that's the end of this video. Share your results with me on Facebook group. Share your new beliefs with me on the Facebook group along with your old negative belief and your new positive belief on the new empowering belief. Keep repeating it. Help, ask the group members to help you to repeat it with you. You help the other group members to repeat it for them. Ask them for references on the group that this belief is true. And many people will give you references. You give references to other people about what beliefs they post on the Facebook group. Maybe you have some references to prove their new belief is the truth, right? Help each other on the Facebook group and let's become masters of the law of attraction. All right, guys. So take care. Bye bye. And I'll see you soon in another video of mastering law of attraction. Remember to do your law of attraction techniques today. Okay. Your affirmations, your visualization technique, your gratitude technique, and your vision board. All right. Take care. Bye bye.